This is the Living Water School 2024 graduation video, but it's special because it is a celebration of how far we have come in nine years. It tells the story of our graduates. It tells the story of our school and how each learning group is part of the trivium and shows student learning. All of our graduates, all of our graduates, graduates have been accepted into college and have received either a full ride or a scholarship. So let's give one more. And it means so much to me because this is not only a great accomplishment for Living Water School, but this is an accomplishment for us as a people. So let's not take for granted that our ancestors fought so that their offspring, us, could attain the highest level of education in this country. They fought for a day like today when black people could gather in a room and openly celebrate as, as the educational ac accomplishments of our people. So we've come a long way, and I believe there is no greater struggle in this country than the struggle for black education. Mm -hmm. So before I, um, I'm going to get into a little bit of a history lesson. I'm going to talk about some of uh, from slavery up to uh, current day. It's going to get slightly academic, but I won't delve, delve too deep. But as I Proceed to jump in. You might want to buckle up, you know, <laughs> take my hand, and take take the hands of people around. <laughs> we're, we're, we're going to ride, ride this together, okay? Each of our graduates has a story, a story of overcoming all types of obstacles to get to this day. And you'll hear a little bit of their stories later on in the video. But when I look at them walking across the street from the school building to the Lorian Hotel, where our graduation was held, it symbolizes that journey. And I am so proud of them. <laughs> All right, let's start back at the beginning, slavery. So if we go back to this period of time, um, so the enslavement in the country, uh, there, uh, this was a time where it was an organized and systematic effort to keep us uneducated, to make sure that we, we did not know how to read or to write. And for example, back in the 18, um, early 1830s, uh, this is, uh, us meeting here would have been illegal because uh, uh, it was against the law to teach, teach blacks to read or write. It was, a, it was uh, illegal for whether you're a slave or free. Uh, it was the fines or um, fines up to 100 bucks, which was a lot of money back then. And I have a couple of stories I want to share from uh, slavery times. Uh, uh, one is that um, there was a uh, slave that worked for a master to own a storehouse. And in the storehouse, he would, when the master wasn't looking or was preoccupied, he would go sneak in there, not to eat the food, he would go there to read. And so he'd have a little book and he would just by candlelight try to, try to um, uh, use that time to just gain as much knowledge as he could. Right? So one day, he was so engrossed in, engrossed in his book that he didn't see Master come in, right? Master opened the door and, um, and just didn't have any time to think. So he took his book and threw it across the room, right? And Master's like, boy, what you doing up in here? And uh, he was, he's like, you know, didn't have an answer, right? And he asked him again, said, boy, what are you doing? And so the slave was smart enough to tell him, not to tell him that he was reading. So he lied and told him that he was, he was eat, eating the food. Mm. And so the master took him and whipped him for that. But the slave knew that it was better to get whipped for uh, eating the food than to get something a lot worse and learn how to, 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 to uh, show him that he could read. Wow. Right? Whatever story I want to share is that uh, this is an account from a... Um, from a, another uh, slave around that same time frame, uh, early 1800s. He said, when my master's family were gone away on the Sabbath, I used to go into the house, get down the great Bible and lie on the floor and read, taking care, however, to put, put the Bible back before they returned. Uh, there I learned it was contrary to the, to the revealed will of God that one man should hold another as a slave. I had always heard it talk among slaves that we ought not to be held as slaves, that our forefathers and mothers were stolen for Africa, 
where there are free men and women. But in the Bible, I learned that God hath made one blood all nations of men to dwell on the face of the earth. Again, I'll give you a little snippets of how education has impacted us as a people. Yeah. And this struggle continued up until the Civil War, 1865, um, when uh, blacks were finally free. And like a children's storybook, black people live happily ever after. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Interesting how the uh, strategy of the oppressive system, system shifted. So this is almost like, okay, we can't stop these people from reading or writing, but we're gonna, we're sure gonna make it hard for them. Uh, during this period, they, uh, the Supreme Court, in the case of Plessy versus Ferguson, they, uh, they, in this case, they ruled that, okay, you know, black people, they're, um, they have some rights, but there's some natural deficiencies, some cultural differences that between black and white. Uh, they deserve an education, but we don't want them mingling with us. So, we're, so as long as it's all, so long as everything is separate but equal, then we're good, right? They get the education, and when we get our stuff, and everything's good, right? Uh, but yes, it was separate, but it's, it's separate. They honored half that bargain. It was separate, but not equal. Right. Uh, the schoolhouse is definitely separate, and. Um, our ancestors often had to build, their, despite paying taxes, they had to build their own schoolhouses. Schoolhouses got hand-me-downs uh, from books from white schools. There often weren't enough teachers, and money was limited. Uh, this is where the battle of education, the educational soul of black America was, was fought. Uh, white Southern and some Northerners felt that if black folks were going to learn, they might as well learn to be better servants. Uh, so they pushed a model of industrial education that promoted that blacks should be cooks, cleaners, maids, agricultural workers, shoe shiners. So, 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 um, uh, students, if you, uh, if your parents are pushing you to go beyond where they were or to attain higher levels of greatness, greatness, it's because of these, yes. these types of things that uh, that they were told or their forefathers or for parents were told is why they want you to achieve beyond what they were told they could do. Um, uh, General Armstrong, the founder of Hampton University and Booker T's Washington's mentor, he had uh, he felt that uh, blacks were 2,000 years behind whites morally and she probably should avoid getting into politics and voting. It was all too complicated and they needed time to kind of catch up mentally. Uh, and, and it was best for uh, uh, blacks to focus on manual labor uh, that they learned in slavery. And, and so, hey, as a bonus, the, 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 the South got cheap labor. So it's sort of like a win-win. Everybody's happy, at least from uh, General Armstrong's perspective. All right? So this Jim Crow era uh, went along to the Board of, Edu uh, to the Board of Education decision, uh, which outlawed segregation. Black students were bused to white schools to integrate them. Uh, they endured physical, verbal my abuse. Teachers first. Um, to my teachers, I pray for you. I pray that God continues to give you wisdom, kindness, and peace. I'm sorry, and patience, so that you'll be able to take these young, brilliant minds and shape them into upstanding creations of the Most High. I pray that you show these endless potential. I pray that you show them their endless potential God has placed within them, as you did for me. And lastly. I pray that you find joy in raising the next generation of soon or not too soon adults. <laughs> to my family, I want to say thank you. Mm. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so the way that I did this in my speech, I broke it down. So 
every letter stands for something. Um, so T stands for be denied the right to read the right to read or write. They couldn't uh, deny to attend a uh, a good school that was integrated. Um, we enter into a era of de facto or legal segregation. Uh, this era, kind of a current era, um, uh, many whites moved out of the, out of the big cities into the suburbs, leaving super majorities uh, black cities, which were uh, DC, DC was seventy percent black. Um, Detroit was 80% black. Uh, it was, this era was kicked off by the su Supreme Court decision of Milliken versus Bradley. And that ruled that so long as there was not explicit segregation, everything's fine. Mm -hmm. so, so you have your, uh, white suburbs, black inner city, you know, so long as you, you don't find a document that said, don't let these black people in here, <laughs> then, you know, it's okay. Uh, So, so in this time we live, where uh, we live, like we we have policies that that limit, contain, and constrain black educational achievement, um, and these policies address in neutral, complex legal arguments that hide racist intent. We live in a society where you go free as you please, but often feel invisible barriers to slow your progress or make you feel unwelcome in certain spaces. So graduates, the fight continues. You are, you are on the front lines. Yes. But we stand with you. Please know that a Living Water School will be forever your home. Uh, we are your community. We are your family. So as I begin to close, I'm going to issue, issue or discuss, share three or four recommendations for our families here. Uh, four suggestions. As I say, it takes a village to raise a child. Forever growing connection with God. Without his guidance, none of this would have been possible. Next, I want to thank Miss Anika. You are the backbone of this beautiful community that you have made from scratch. You have come so far with making this an amazing school. Everyone knows how, how busy Miss Anika is taking on multiple other jobs while still taking care of her family and being an admin all at once. She is a true meaning of a superwoman and has proven to us all that it's, all that it's always possible to do whatever you want in life if you truly put your mind to it. It is, it is astonishing to think how a young girl that was bullied in school her whole life, <laughs> went through depression, and faced many racist encounters in life, was able to take all of her anger and sadness to build a foundation for kids who have been through similar situations. Mm. Many of us right. before, I'm beyond thankful for each and every one of them because they chose to stay and help us when, it chose to stay and help us grow when they didn't have to. To the Living Water community, thank you for always being so welcome and loving to me and my brother Zeal. His love for the school has grown so much over time just like me. He has made friends, improved his communication skills, and generally enjoyed his time here so much. For that, I am forever grateful as we both used to have a passionate disliking for that uh, general idea of school. <laughs> but coming here has changed that significantly. Today is the day that I am now ready for the new journey that I am about to embark on. I am ready for the wins and losses, the celebrations and disappointments. I think as humans, we forget to cherish even the bad lessons in life. Flip page. <laughs> because they shape us to be the people we are today. Yes. We learn and grow, and sometimes we fall. Yes. It's all a part of the human experience that makes life worth living. Mm -hmm. Thank you to my grandparents for being huge motiv motivations in my life, teaching me to always be thoughtful, sincere, and to always keep going step by step, day by day. Thank you to my parents and bonus parents for being my best friends and biggest supporters I could ever ask for. To my mother, who's possibly trying to hold in her sob as of now, thank you for being there, being there when I fell as if everyone was against me, for being my second half in my rock. To my father, who is always trying to help others before himself, you have always told me that when you make it, so do, wait, you, that when you make it, so do I. Well, now I have made it, and so have you. Oh, wait, sorry, I, I think this is, he never got the opportunity to graduate. Well, now I have made it and so have you. This is also your graduation just as much as mine. I wouldn't have been here without either of you and I hope you both know that I love you beyond words. And last me, lastly, to my grandfather watching me from above, I think about you every day and I know you're proud of me. Thank you to the Living Water community for this eventful journey.
For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Number two, once you have your, your spirit, your heart right with God, um, then you should be into the word. Psalms uh, 119, uh, 105, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So like that slave that was sneaking, reading the Bible when the master's family's out, we should have that same attitude. But, you know, we don't have a master. We don't have a, no threat for us to be thrown in jail or whipped or beaten, limbs chopped off reading the Bible. We should have that same kind of energy um, uh, when, when we're reading our word today. Uh, the last thing I want to cover in the spiritual realm is uh, Deuteronomy 6, um, 6 through 9. says, And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them dilig diligently to your children and talk to them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you rise up, you shall, you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be frontless between your eyes. You shall write them on a doorpost of your gates. And this is a call to make sure that your children, not only your heart's right, you're reading the word, but that you ingrain this in your children so that they have their own, that you position them to have their own our relationship with Jesus Christ and grow in their walk. Number two bucket is education, right? Again, this is my call to arms. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the first thing I have is, uh, so research has shown that the key factor in determining success in school is family upbringing. Families that create a learning environment uh, have children that embrace learning at school. On the flip side, if children grow up in a family does not, does not create an atmosphere of learning at home, they have a difficult time in adjusting at school. And so this is really incumbent on us as parents that we create an atmosphere that, that our children love to learn yes. and have that same passion that our ancestors had, yes. like the, yes. the uh, slave that threw his book, um, have that same passion for, for, uh, that we we'll instill in our children uh, for their studies. And um, author and abolitionist uh, Harriet Beecher Stowe said of former slaves, so they rushed to the schoolroom. They cried for the spelling book as bread and pled for teachers as a necessity of life. Mm -hmm. There was a passion for education Jesus. that we need to have as a people. Yeah. Before I start my speech, um, I would like to just give a special thank you to Ms. Anika for investing her time, energy, money, um, patience with my education, my learning, um, my personal growth. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Um, now I will start my speech. <laughs> <clears throat> Before I came to the Living Water School, I had many challenges with my peers and mental health, which even resulted in me not having a formal fifth grade graduation, which is why this night is so important to me. <laughs> <laughs> However, that all changed in 2016 when I was first enrolled in the Living Water School. Throughout my first years, it was a long, hard journey. But through that journey, God blessed me with growth, love, and acceptance. Mm. My years at the Living Water School has taught me so much about myself, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. And without people like Miss Nika and the entire Prather family, I would not be standing before you today. I would also like to thank my parents, relatives, and Miss Anika for not just investing their time and money into me, but also their love, grace, and belief that I could do anything I put my mind to. I would also like to thank my friends and uh, my fellow peers for doing the same.
is that we need to really understand the benefits of a classical education. The goal of, the, the goal of this educational system is to produce well-rounded individuals that are prepared for leadership, politics, great thinkers. This is, a, this is achieved through a trivium, grammar, logic, and rhetoric. Uh, it is designed to promote critical thinking, intellectualism, and reason skills that will serve you well. And this is something that um, uh, my wife and my in-laws have championed for a long time. And, 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 and in doing my research, I have uh, come to embra embrace this uh, educational philosophy. And I have one, one, read one little quote that I came across. It wasn't in a book about uh, classical education. It was a book, a book about black education. And this was something, uh, this was uh, blacks were um, sought classical education right after slavery. So black educational leaders and educators adopted the classical liberal curriculum, which mirrored the curriculum in white schools. They saw it as providing the access to the best intellectual traditions of that era and the best means to understand their own historical development and social uniqueness. For example, Richard Wright uh, uh, found in his studies of the classics solid evidence to counter claims of black inferior in inferiority which is something Nika has uh, cited in her own work on the classics, right? So bucket number three out of a four is to donate. So the Living Water School needs your time, it needs your money to grow <laughs> as an institution. Yes. Uh, as I've been studying the history of black education, I am encouraged and, and saddened all at the same time at the story of black schools uh, throughout the years. In the Jim Crow era, blacks mortgaged their home, sold land, gave money to build a school uh, in, in their time. In, in their town, uh, my grandfather and other men uh, chopped and donated uh, firewood so my mom's school would have heat during the winter time. It was a sense of community, and everybody pulled together and made sure that we, as a people, had a place to get educated. So we, so to, so for us. To, uh, for Living Water School and us as a community to, to grow, we're going to need that type of togetherness and teamwork. And it starts with us first. Living Water community, let's continue to stand behind our scholars, continue to support them. As Ms. Anika said, we start off with our um, low springs, our springs go to creeks, creeks flow to rivers, rivers flow to bays, and then they flow to us. So let's stay on top of them and yes. continue to bless them and nurture them and love on them. Thank you. Yes. Due to us, and even though Layla um, came in you know, fairly late in the school year. I can only imagine what she was like in the other classes, but I know in the STEM class, she was she was on, on it from the time on she arrived. And so it definitely um, yes. proud of her and her accomplishments in such a short time. So keep up the good work, Layla. Good job, Layla. <laughs> good job, Layla. To be prayerful. Yes. So Ephesians uh, 6, 12 says, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers. Yes. against authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. And they also reminded of the uh, passage in Matthew when uh, Jesus, uh, it's also all the gospels, but when uh, uh, the one I'm referring to is in Matthew, when Jesus tempted the, uh, I mean, when devil, the devil tempted Jesus, it says uh, the devil took Jesus on a very high, high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the, of the world and their splendor. And the devil said, all this I give to you, he said, if you bow down and worship me. Jesus said, away from me, Satan, for it's written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. So I find Christ's response enlightening. Jesus said the, uh, uh, Jesus said the word, uh, and uh, Jesus, Jesus referenced the word and said that only God is to be worshipped. There's one thing Jesus did not say. Jesus did not say that Satan didn't have control over the kingdoms. Uh, he did not uh, rebuke Satan for that. Um, Jesus will definitely rule over the earth one day, but for now, Satan is in control uh, of, of the kingdoms. And I do believe that Satan is behind a lot of the racist policies that have enslaved and impressed, oppressed our people in this country throughout, in, throughout, in this country and throughout the world for. Uh, 400 years. I just, yeah, I don't have any biblical proof of that. I just, but just my study of scripture and looking at black history, it seems as if 
Satan has in his, he has a plan for black people that involves oppression and servitude for the people of this country, right? And um, that's why I think we need to be on our knees to fight against that. And, uh, and limiting black education and the black young minds seem to be one of Satan's yes, goals. Yes, yes. Um, that is the only way I can understand the consistent oppression throughout the years from not only white people, but from our own people, black people. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a number of black-run public school systems, which I have attended and worked in, that, uh, is to use Anika's uh, words, didn't give a flying fig about the, about students, <laughs> so which is really sad, yeah. right? And so not only do we have, we've kind of raised a system, but sometimes our own school system, our own people prevent us from getting a good education. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. So people, this is a spiritual battle we are fighting. This is a battle that's going to require us getting right spiritually, training our kids spiritually, creating learning environments at home supporting the Living Water School and other schools and continually being on our knees. This is a requirement for us to maintain and advance our opportunities for us as people and for us to thrive in this country. Thank you. Thank you. You have to figure out how to be the person you want to become. Life is about being the person you want to be with the people you love being around with your friends, your family, co-workers, it is possible. The, the, the path I went down is Job Corps. I went to Job Corps in Laurel, and I went down there for color. And those are our beautiful graduates. I'm so proud of them. Now we're gonna go into the part of the ceremony where we celebrate those students who are going to new learning groups based on the classical trivium. I, I not only impress that upon our scholars, but also our parents. Every day is an opportunity for us to learn something new. And as long as we continue learning, we continue growing, and we continue mm -hmm. being. And so with that, um, just want to acknowledge first, going from our creeks and moving on to rivers, Destin Prather. <laughs> <laughs> and also moving from creeks to rivers, Amira. <laughs> Before acknowledging the next group, I just wanted to say it's it's extremely just overwhelming even for me, and I'm not even their parent. But to see how much they've grown, you know, I, I've been able to interact with Destin and Amira from the time I arrived at the school. Um, they've always been in some some sort of whatever it is I'm doing, they're a part of it. And just watching the growth, but especially Amira, I, I just want to tell you, the growth I've seen in you this year, yes. I couldn't be more proud. Yes. Um, thank you so much for stepping up in class. You know, you went from the kid who I'm like, Amira, Amira. Amira, to, thank you, Amira. I really appreciate that being proactive, helping out, and almost becoming like my right hand assistant. Yes. So, um, thank you, but but De Destin, just to watch you, I'm, I just can't believe how old they're getting. Right? <laughs> how old they're getting? You notice I said that, not me. Like, they are getting. Um, but I'm just extremely proud of you all. Keep continue to push forward. Okay. Let's give it a Nine years through God's gracious and mighty hand of creating the Living Water School with my husband, our wonderful staff and faculty, our parents, our students, and even our grandparents who would often volunteer at the school. And we want to honor one of those grandparents whose health is failing through a tribute given by her grandson who won't graduate for a couple of years, but she's always dreamed of watching him graduate and a prayer by Pastor Dwayne McKinney. I, I uh, appreciate how you made me feel safe and all around how my whole life. I love you, Grandma. I love you, Grandma. We can ask or imagine. So, God, I pray 
on behalf of my sister, first of all, that you will just give her, uh, 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 Lord God, no pain in her body. Yes, Lord. Remove any pain and discomfort from her. God, we know you're able to heal and, and restore. Lord, we ask for healing in her body. And now the Living Water School is headed into year number 10. And we would not have been able to do it without this wonderful staff and faculty. Without them, there would be no Living Water School. There would be no graduates who got into all of the colleges of their choice. So we are excited about year number 10 and the wonderful things God has in store for us.